What's going on guys? This is Tony from 12 Volt Mods. Um, I was just looking around. I just posted a video about the waterproofing about your RCs and everything. And I remember that I had another receiver that I could waterproof. So I am making the video now on actually how to waterproof your RC electronics. So this works with anything. An electronic speed controller, um, RC four wheel drive winch whatever your receiver as you can see this is a receiver here um but it's about the same process and everything um now that there's waterproof escs you don't really have to do with your escs so you don't have to worry about that but they still don't really make a really good quality receiver that's waterproof that's multiple channels so for some of you guys that are running multi-channels or just a really standard controller or something like that and you still want to be waterproof this is how i'm going to explain it for you guys it's a very simple process um it's not hard to do at all it just takes a lot of time and patience so as long as you have time and patience you're all good so as you can see here these are some fly sky receivers here uh, this one here that has the case off, it's an actual Red Cat one, but it's an actual Fly Sky receiver. So they're both identical. So they're going to look exactly the same. So when you're done, your receiver should look like the normal regular receiver that like this one here. It just has some shrink wrap on this one just because the uh, antenna got nicked. So just ignore that. But we are going to get on the process. So first thing you need to do is take your receiver, take it all apart. If you got a fly sky, there's four little screws on the back. So you just pop those off and there you go. Screws are right here in the little video right here. But I'm just going to pull those off to the side so you don't see them. And then there we go. Now the next step you have to do, probably because your receiver has been used and everything in dirt or whatever, is you have to take the receiver and take a, like an old toothbrush and just brush it off like this. You're not going to damage the receiver at all if you're using a toothbrush. So I wouldn't use like a, a wire brush or anything like that. I just use a toothbrush. So do not use anything except for a toothbrush because it's soft. That's the main reason why you want to use it. So just clean it up until it gets all nice and clean. So the surface is nice and clean and everything. And you want to do the backside too. Now this one here was actually technically waterproofed already by the manufacturer, but they don't really do a good job of it. So um, I still waterproof it my way because it's a lot better and you know it's waterproof then. So what I do is brush it off as you can see. Clean the terminals and everything. And once that's done, you're good. Next step you have to do is make sure the inside of the case is clean too. So take the brush clean it off it doesn't have to be perfect it just you want to get most of the dust and everything out of it so as you can see just scrub it it'll come out like that there you go same with the bottom the bottom again same process as you can see this one was dirty because it's been used you know There you go, nice and clean. <sighs> Blow it off, whatever, right? So there you go, all cleaned up, as you can see. Now, the next process you're gonna do is if you actually watch my other video, you, uh, you wouldn't seen that I did mention that you need to use the products that I use, again, sorry, is E6000. And the Permatex dielectric grease. Now, you only use the, uh, the dielectric grease when you're actually connection to your connections. But when you're doing the waterproofing, you do not need the dielectric grease at the moment. So, once you have your receiver and your E6000, what you're going to do is you're going to hold, turn on the back side. And you're going to coat the whole entire backside. Um, it's good if you can get something to actually hold the receiver. Just a 
grip it while you're trying to uh, coat it. So what I use is like these pinching tweezers, as you can see. So you can actually hold it like this. Oh, there's a little bit of dirt there, so I'm just going to get that too. It doesn't have to be 100% cover, uh, clean, but, you know, the more you get off of it, the better. <sighs> Alright, so we're ready to actually coat it. So what I do is I take the E6000. Now, there, I do do another step, is I usually put Corrosion X on it. You don't have to. Uh, some people have a hard time getting it. You don't have to use the Corrosion X. It's just an extra step that I use. You can actually just use the E6000 right on top of the receiver uh, as waterproofing right away. So as you can see, here's the receiver. I'm going to take the E6000. And what I'm doing is I'm dabbing it all over the circuit board. As you can see. And you're just going to get it to give it a good coat. Now you don't want a super thick coat. See how it's starting to get thick? You want to start moving that the adhesive, the, the glue all over the board. So you want to you want it to go all over right to the edge of the board. You know, cover all the circuits, cover all the capacitors, cover all the connections, cover everything like that. Now the reason why I I say don't put it on super thick is because when you put the case on it. It's going to uh, it's going to kind of squeeze some of it out, but when it dries, it actually shrinks. So you don't have to put like a crazy amount on, but as you can see, you just want to put an amount on it. So you take the case while it's wet, and you just stick it in it like this. And as you can see, while I was putting it in, some of the uh, the glue is actually oozing out a little. That's okay. What you do is just slowly wipe it. And then there you go. Now that's the back side. The back side's done now. Now what you're going to do to the top is pretty much the same process. But as you can see, there's a little button here. As you can see. You're going to coat everything except for the top of these terminals. So just around the terminals and around the button. That's all you're going to do. And then you're just going to make sure that the underneath the antenna is covered too. But mainly what you're covering is all the electronic components. So like these little capacitor caps, this little resistors here and everything, and all like the bare circuit board connections, like the little connections here and that, and the LED. You can coat the LED, it doesn't matter. So we're going to do the process again. So what I do is, sorry, so I'll do the edges of the capacitors and I'll just squeeze it in and around it. As you can see, see how I'm just dabbing it? So all I gotta do is dab it. So I'm just dabbing around the electronics, around the antenna and everything, just so they're covered. Now the circuit board right around here, how it has nothing on it, you don't have to cover that. But you want to cover like the LED and then around the switch now the reason why I say around it is because when this glue settles right it's gonna settle around that button it won't settle it won't go on top of it now if you get a tiny bit around the on the button that's okay it's not a big deal it's not the end of the world you can actually hold this like on an angle and it will slowly start drooping down and there you go. Or you can use like a razor blade like this. Just push it in. See? It will smooth it itself out and settle. So it's not a big deal. Right? I need a little bit more. So I can do the ends here. So I'm just going to let it sit like that for a moment. And then I'm going to take some more. And do around the connections of this of the the receiver port like the servo ports so I'm just gonna do in here just slowly squeeze it you don't need to squeeze it a lot just so it's coated there you go now it's coated now once it's coated what I recommend 
is while it's wet, it's pretty much put the case back together like this. Just squeeze it back on. And then, while it's all wet, quickly, throw the screws in it. Now, for some reason, there's only three screws for this receiver. There was not four. But just put all the screws back in it if you have screws on it. Some receivers don't have screws. Some just clip together. So once you clip it together, it's all good. But the rule of thumb with, with a receiver is never hang it to dry. Whatever you do, once you're done doing this process, is let it sit right side up like this. The reason why is because then all the glue and everything else will settle and actually level itself out. Because if you put it like this, it'll start to drip down and get all over everything, like the connections of it. But if you leave it like this, it'll all settle and smooth itself out. Uh, what I recommend is give it a couple days to dry before using it. Don't give it a day, give it two days at least. Because if the outside's dry, but the inside of the glue is still kind of wet, it can actually still short the circuits and everything so you want it to fully cure before you actually use it but once you do that as you can see look it looks pretty much i just gotta rub the access off once you rub all the access off the sides and everything it looks like you never even took it apart it looks factory and everything and the nice thing is boom you don't need to put it in a waterproof case because it's really bulky you can just stick it in there. You can put it on its side. You can put it upside down. It doesn't matter how you mount it. Once it's totally dry, it's totally waterproof. And then once you want to uh, connect all your stuff, take a little bit of dielectric grease and just put it into the servo plugs. So when the servo plug plugs in, it's coated with the dielectric grease. And that will keep it from not corroding on you guys. It's that simple, guys. So I hope this, guys, uh, I hope this helped you guys on... Uh, actually waterproofing your electronics this is a simple way this is the safest way it's way better than using uh liquid electrical tape i hate that stuff it's really bad stuff and everything else and the downside about it if it gets even a little bit warm it softens right up real quick and everything where this stuff if it gets warm it's okay it can take the it could take the heat a little bit and the nice thing is it's not going to destroy your stuff because once it dries, it actually dries out all the water-based stuff out of the glue and everything, and you're good. But let's say down the road you have an electronics that you want to like peel off or something, you need to do some soldering onto it or something like that. The nice thing is you heat this stuff a little bit and it can rub right off and or peel right off. That's the nice advantage about it. But again, I hope this helped you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions, please post. I will try and answer your questions as best as I can. Sorry that I haven't uh, posted anything about RCs or anything like that on my channel for a while. I kind of took a break from RCs. Well, I took a break from almost everything for a while. Mainly RCs just because of uh, I was uh, dealing with some medical stuff. But uh, now I'm starting to feel better and I'm having a lot more time on my hands. I'm probably going to get back into the process of RCs again. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.